Welcome to the Plastics and Beyond podcast, an SBE-sponsored podcast supporting a diverse, equitable, and inclusive workforce. I am your host, Lillian Judy, and I invite you to join me every month for new diverse conversations. Hi, my name is Lillian Judy with the Plastics and Beyond podcast, and I have an amazing guest with me today, Lloyd Martin, and he's going to shed some light on his company's program called the Second Chance Program. So hi, Lloyd. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Um, let's just start off by having you tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm the Senior Vice President of uh, Manufacturing and IT at our company. Our company is CKS Packaging. We have 27 manufacturing plants that makes plastic bottles, uh, containers, around the United States. Um, and we're based in Atlanta. So is your background in plastics? Are you also a plastics engineer or yeah. how did you start? I have a plastics uh, um, engineering technology degree from a university in Southern Ohio called Shawnee State University. Okay. So I am also a plastics engineer and um, I stumbled on plastics engineering. I had no clue there was a program called plastics engineering when I went to college. So was this something you always wanted to do or did you just kind of end up in PET? No, I was, um, I actually went over to visit to be a, an electromechanical engineer. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the plastics lab just happened to be next door to, um, to electromechanical classes. And I saw all the equipment in there, mm -hmm. big colorometer and all that. Um, so I looked at all that and said, I'm, I want to be a plastics engineer. And I signed up for those classes. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's very similar <laughs> to my story. Because yes. <laughs> I also went in for chemical engineering and I ran into the head of the plastics department. And he said, oh, have you heard about plastics? And I said, no. He gave me some pamphlets to read and I was like, I'm sold. So that's how I kind of started my journey. But today's conversation is very personal to me because I love what you're doing. Um, and the reason why it's personal to me is because my engineering journey was really tough. And um, I consider myself a second chance engineer, if I can say, um, because I initially started in um, chemical engineering in Florida. And um, I really struggled through my classes to the point that I almost got kicked out of my program. And so I managed to transfer over to Massachusetts and I started in plastics engineering and finally made it. But the journey was about eight years long. And so I, um, I always struggled to kind of open up and tell people about that. So when, I, when you mentioned to me that, you know, you kind of give people second chances. I, I think this is a, a very important um, thing you're doing and a very important topic for us to discuss. So can you tell me a bit about how that started? Sure, we're, um, uh, we're a family owned business, uh, privately owned still. Uh, uh, the family has very strong Christian values mm -hmm. and leads our organization in that uh, with, with those Christian values. So we have a war room set up so that anybody can go in and pray there at corporate headquarters. Um, and uh, I, I was praying one morning before work and, and it just kind of struck me that I think we should do something formal um, in helping people get a second chance. Mm -hmm. And so I went and talked to one of the um, sons of the owners, one of the family members, thinking that I'm too busy, <laughs> I'm too busy. But God's put this on me in a way, so um, ask him what he thinks uh, about, about me really just immersing myself into uh, starting a second chance program on a formal basis. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, you know, I explained to him, I know I travel a lot, but this is, you know, this really just struck me. I, you know, I really think we need to do something that's more formal and, and really track it. And uh, what are your thoughts on it? And he said, well, um, who am I to argue with God? Mm. So, wow. so I really went down to the safe house in Atlanta. Uh, it was where I started. I had no idea what I was doing, and interviewed about twenty-five uh, gentlemen that were homeless. Um, we talked talked to um, every one of them. Hired five of wow. them, and three of them still are working for us today. And the goal was to have five sustained employees at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And, but the, but 
the homeless led me to the rehab facilities because okay. of all the drug and alcohol wow. and the people being released from rehab. Mm -hmm. That led me to prison release programs in Atlanta. And at the end of 2016, when we started this, we had a little over 100 sustained employees wow. uh, in the company. And today, in 2022, as of last week, we have a little over 300. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, some great success stories. We had a gentleman that was... Um, he was, my first hire was homeless. Okay. He lived seven and a half years on the streets of Atlanta. Wow. And he's a, an operator now in one of our facilities in Atlanta mm -hmm. and has his own home, has his own transportation. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, so, which is, which is really a great success story, right? They're one of the originals. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we have just two weeks ago, I just promoted a gentleman to be our plant manager in our Illinois plant. Wow. He spent seven years in prison uh, on drug-related charges. Uh, came out and he worked his way up from the bottom. He just wanted to have a career. So when I interview, and when now my leaders throughout the country interview uh, people that are coming out of rehab or prison release systems or the homeless, you know, we tell them, if you want to have a career, mm -hmm. we can start out your school. Yeah. <laughs> And we'll pay you to go to school, mm -hmm. and we'll teach you, and you're, you can branch out and do anything in the plastics industries that you want. If you want to have a job, then we probably don't want to hire you. Mm. We want you to have a career. Yeah. We want you to have something that's life-sustaining. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, like, what's the process? Like, you meet this person, the person stands out to you. Okay, I want to hire this person. What is the process? Like, how do you onboard the person? Do you take them through any medical screenings? Like, what... How do you kind of get to the point where they are employed? Yeah, so we don't check the box, so to speak, right? Okay. So I already know they have a history, so there's no need to go dig up their history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's out. We literally, um, you know, it's it's been really great for a lot of my managers and leaders in our company because they've grown a lot from this. It's changed the way we interview, not just second and chance people, but also um, you know, people from college or, or coming in from any other program. Mm -hmm. We, uh, once we identify somebody that we think wants to have a career and is eager to, to um, come into our company, then we hire them the next day, typically. Wow. Maybe we hire them the same day, wow. according to what time of day it is. And we put them in a position and we, we usually try to team them up with somebody to mentor and help them through. You know, the second, uh, somebody who needs a second chance, there's two parts of that, really, and I'll talk about that mm -hmm. later today. There's re-entry, which is pretty basic stuff. It's, you need to have an ID, you need to get a bank account, you need mm -hmm. a place to live, you need mm -hmm. transportation. You know, you need to set all those things up. Yeah. That's, but then there's, uh, there's an issue if there's not reintegration. So there's re-entry and then reintegration. Reintegration is more about getting a new circle of friends yeah. right yep. building trust mm -hmm. understanding and having a plan on the weekend when you have time off mm -hmm. so that you don't fall back to your old ways mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so uh helping them get through those first two three months having somebody they can call on whether it's one of our hr people another employee that has embraced the uh, you know this uh, them as a partner or mentor um helps a whole lot mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I think, so do you have programs that target the career portion of it and then the personal um, growth portion, or do you just have one program that targets both? So we're a business, so we, we yeah. focus on the career, <laughs> yeah. right? And we focus on helping them build their career. So, mm -hmm. you know, success is the, as I think Napoleon Hill said, success is the progressive realization of a worthy idea or goal, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be a plant manager. You don't have to be an engineer. You can be an operator, a packer, a quality technician. You know, um, the, all of it is success if you're doing what you love to do yeah. and you're at, constantly excelling at it, mm -hmm. right? So the, get, get, them, get people in, start training them in our, in our industry, let them understand all the different paths they can take and let them settle in where they feel successful. Uh, so that's that's kind of our program. 
from the life part of it, you know, we're not, we're certainly not tell, telling people how to live their lives, yeah. but we are there to support them if they need it. Yeah. So we're there. For instance, one of the homeless people that we hired originally came in and he was an electro mechanical type person. So he started out being a mechanic in the, in the company, didn't have transportation. He was, he was taking the bus. Mm -hmm. He was always late. Mm -hmm. um, and, and four or five mechanics all chipped in at that, at that plant and bought him a, bought, wow. uh, a bicycle so that he could ride it because he wasn't that far from work and he mm -hmm. could ride it to work every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, uh, you know, you, you, I guess that's helping their lifestyle to some degree yeah. and building that circle of, of a new circle of influence. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so is there any part of this that is very personal to you? Like, do you have any personal, like, experiences, family background that has had to go through this process? Is that why you're so... Because I find it very, like, amazing and really inspirational that a senior vice president of a company is embarking on this journey. I think it's, it's surreal and it's not very common. So I, I really want to dig deep and find out like where <laughs> where does this come from? So so yes is the answer. Okay. Uh, during during when I was going to college, uh, and I'm a military brat. My father was in the military. So there was a there was a time that I was virtually homeless for a few days um, because of circumstances that happened, mm -hmm. and I was going to join the military. I was going to give up on on college. I was, I didn't know which military I wanted to join, but I was yeah. going to join the military. Mm -hmm. And I ran into a gentleman that had a restaurant um, in the little town that I was in. Mm -hmm. And to, to the, it's a short story here, but he basically gave me a second chance. He gave me a place to live. Mm. Um, he didn't charge me a whole lot for it. And we became friends and I stayed in college. I graduated to start my career out as well. So. Mm -hmm. And you know, build my way all the way up. And yeah. I think, you know, he kind of, in a, in a sense, he gave me that second chance yeah. to to really start out in my career in plastics, as opposed to just going into the military at the mm -hmm. time. And to kind of got me off the streets there for you know, virtually for the la for that two or three days that I was there. Mm -hmm. That always stuck with me because I had mentors that said, never forget where you come from. Yeah, you never forget where you come from. So I never forget those moments. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's time now to, in, in my career, in my life, I think it's time to help others and, you know, give back, give back yeah. is the way to do it. And that, like I said, in 2016, April of 2016, I won't forget that, yeah. um, you know, I was just praying about it and it just, it just stuck with me. So people, well, the buzz um, recently, I would say since the pandemic, a lot of people started having conversations surrounding diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think I've heard a lot of companies, a lot of people have these conversations, but it's very rare for you to, this is an aspect of DEI that I don't think is even touched, is an, an untouched industry or untouched um, area where people, people forget that this also needs work, this also needs support. You know, we're always talking about um, you know, diversity in people of color, women, those are the common ones. But I think that this is very foundational in trying to give back to, because I, I personally don't know much about um, people who are incarcerated and how they try to assimilate back into society. But I, I've heard a lot about how tough it is for them to find jobs, sure. for them to find like um, places to live and stuff. And so for you to be in this position to want to give back, I really want to applaud you. And you. Um, I hope that you do get your flowers. <laughs> um, but I want us to wrap up this conversation by just touching a bit on running a company and implementing something as unique as this. Like you had mentioned that you have prayer Wednesdays and fasts and tell me a bit about that. Like how? So yeah, so yeah. in our company we have a um, prayer every morning. Okay. It's on Teams and anybody that uh, in our company is, can get on Teams uh, and uh, from, from all over the country mm -hmm. and be part of the prayer we have. It's typically from 8.30 to 9, 9.15 mm -hmm. every morning. Every Wednesday we have Bible study. Um, 
at corporate as well as a lot of our manufacturing plants have a Bible study typically once a week, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. And then once a month uh, on a Wednesday, third, usually the third Wednesday, we have a prayer and fast where we invite people from outside of our company to come in and actually have a prayer and fast um, uh, time from about 11.30 to 1 o'clock, 1.30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So yeah, we, wow. we do all of that and invite as many people as we can to uh, join us in, in prayer, not only just for our company, but also in prayer for all of our families and those mm -hmm. in need um, whether it's because of sickness or health or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So what would you say are some of the misconceptions about some of these second chance hires that you have? Misconceptions? Yes. Like societal misconceptions about hiring people, maybe ah. someone who's homeless or someone who's incarcerated or someone. Like what do you think is society's... Um, idea of these kind of people and why is it that a lot of people don't okay like, I get, I hire think I, them I yeah. know what you're saying now. yeah so i don't you know i certainly don't want to um uh think that i know the answer to why yeah. why yeah. everybody doesn't yeah. how they how they feel about people that were incarcerated or in rehab or whatever so but from a company standpoint back from back from the early 80s even did we you know uh the war on drugs uh mothers against drunk drivers mm -hmm. You know all that type of stuff and you can see a lot the incarceration rate went completely up and <clears throat> rehab facilities in, increased tremendously and so forth so and a lot of companies at that time their hiring policy was and still is today because it's hard to break that chain is if you've been incarcerated or you've been had a federal crime or anything like that you they won't hire you mm -hmm. they just won't do it yeah right and so a lot of companies now are breaking those barriers down and, and, and starting to trust the people have paid their dues, mm -hmm. right? And the people that went through rehab are, it's, it's what it's about. They're re rehabilitated, right? Mm -hmm. They need that opportunity. They're not going to stay rehabilitated and, and, and um, off of drugs or alcohol or whatever they did to go to, to jail or prison. They're, they're gonna fall back if they don't have some sort of employment and job yeah. and a way of sustaining their life, right? Mm -hmm. And growing it in their career. So I think there are quite a few companies that have embraced, you know, a second chance type of hiring program. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is that we, we're finding people that have electromechanical deg degrees, master's degrees in business. Wow. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing the amount of people, you know, we're all one poor choice away from possibly being in trouble, right? Yeah, yeah. One or two and, you know. And so I, I think everybody deserves an opportunity to, to restart their life and restart their careers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think that the misconception is is that they can't be trusted, that they're, they're, they didn't rehabilitate and they, <laughs> they, they're still doing drugs or alcohol. Yeah. They're gonna bring it to the workplace. You know, all those, t those fears, right? Mm -hmm. And I would just ask companies to overcome those fears. Yeah. Wow. I have 300 sustained employees. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's very, very like amazing. Um, so to kind of wrap up our conversation, do you have any advice, I guess, to companies that may be considering um, second chance hires? Do you have any tips for any companies that are looking to venture out into this? Like any last words, basically? Sure. Sure, start small. Yeah. Right, start small. If you start a team, you always want to start with small successes and build the teams and encourage the team and, and, and until they get big successes. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the same with this program. Start small. Start with five or six. Understand what you need to do to sustain, help them sustain their, their careers in, mm -hmm. your, in your company, and then grow it from there. Mm -hmm. That's the, I, I guess, the best tip I could give. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're um, I've really enjoyed this conversation. And thank you for all that you're doing. Yeah. And it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, I hope you learned a thing or two from this episode. And I will definitely see you all on the next episode of the Plastics and Beyond podcast. Mm -hmm.